Well, good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a brand new vlog. It's starting to feel like springtime here in the Cotswolds. I'm actually leaving, I'm leaving the Cotswolds this morning. I'm heading into London. I have actually got an overnight stay because I've got two back-to-back -back days of meetings and a really lovely event to attend in the morning. And I've just started to treat myself to hotel stays. So yesterday I booked myself into the Henrietta Street Hotel, which is in Con Garden, super central. I've got a few meetings around that area and it's a really nice hotel. I have stayed there before. I booked myself into the cheapest room, but I'm gonna see if I can wangle <laughs> upgrading myself to the pink room because it's really beautiful, but we'll see. No stress if not. It's gonna be a really nice day, a few meetings today, and then hopefully, still TBC because we've got nothing booked, might be going to the theater with Freddy this evening, so that should be lovely and fun. I'm actually getting a taxi all the way into town today. By the sounds of the gravel crunching, he's just arrived, so it's time to hit the road. unusual just stopped off at the services and I have got a hot crossed bun flavored oat milk latte I'm intrigued could be disgusting could be wonderful I will let you know we might have a royal procession in front of us here look at this They might be doing a practice. Uh, I wonder if they're doing a practice for Ascot, maybe? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because Ascot is soon anyway. Uh, a few months. Yeah. yeah. They take the, uh, they've take the. they taken the scaffolding off Big Ben. Uh, I've yeah. not seen Big Ben without the scaffolding in a few years. Uh, yeah, look, it's open now. Full open. Beautiful. Uh, oh, it's beautiful. I need to do a, I need to do a tourist day. Spice. I look in now, oh. it's gorgeous, it's looking lovely. It looks even better than before. Oh yeah, yeah, 100%. Do they add gold onto it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. looks very bling. Around, yeah, around this, I think so, yeah. And here's Buckingham Palace. Parked up outside Buckingham Palace on a glorious day. It makes me kind of miss when I used to bring Kat, our photographer, out to these beautiful areas and shoot my content in London. Some of my favorite photos were shot in this area here. If I can find them, I'll pop them on the screen. Palace behind us. We think Big Ben and the House of Parliament have had a bit of a, a lick of paint. So made it to Covent Garden and this is where I booked myself to stay tonight. I didn't realise that they would have a floral makeover but they've popped some faux foliage all around the entrance to the hotel. It looks so cute. Oh, I stayed here a couple of years ago at GHD but this is my first time staying here since lockdown. My first meeting of the day is at the Ivy Market Garden which is <laughs> literally just here and I've just had a voice note from Freddie saying that she has booked theatre tickets for this evening but she's not telling me what show it is so I'm in for a treat, I'm in for a surprise this evening which is going to be good fun um, and I've just put the idea across to her that we go and get a Shake Shack <laughs> before dinner, as that's our tradition, which I'm sure she uh, won't object to. Honestly, I'd highly recommend this hotel. The location is so good. We are quite literally, oh, there's Ben. <laughs> the hotel is just there by the blue umbrellas and here is Covent Garden Piazza. Such a great location. And if you're like me, you might like to know that Shake Shack is just there. So there's no chance that tonight's gonna go by without a cheeseburger. London in bloom. They've got a really great collection of terracotta pots outside the Ivy Market. This is where my first meeting is of the day. Lots of mascari. Looking beautiful. I have finished at my meetings for the day and I have realised 
I'm on my way back to the hotel and I have realised that I'm actually incapable of walking past a donut time and not going in and getting donuts. And seeing as I'm meeting Freddie later, I'm sure I won't have to eat all of these by myself. We also have another challenge coming up. I have to walk past Shake Shack and even though I'm not with Freddie yet, I'm just not confident in my ability to walk past it and not get cheese fries. So, ah, wish me luck. Guys, I couldn't do it. And the funny thing is, I'm probably gonna end up having a second Shake Shack with Freddie later. So I'm gonna dig into this and do a little bit more work until Freddie's ready to meet. This is my lovely room for the evening. I thought this was a pretty good price actually for a super last minute room in ultra central London. Nice contemporary, stylish fixtures, nice light fittings, high ceilings, and ooh, a very cute pink bathroom. Okay, my darlings, I left you stuffing my face with cheeseburger and chips, and I've now popped on my lovely Zimmerman dress. It's a little bit creased, which is super annoying. Unfortunately, there's not an iron in the room, um, but never mind. I've also got on, I've also got on my lovely pearl Mac and Mac shoes. I've just pinned my hair back away from my face because it annoys me having it in my face whenever. I'm doing anything like at a theatre show and also my curls are doing that annoying thing when they curl the wrong direction because I've had it up in a bun while dashing about between meetings. So I'm ready to go meet Freddie. She has just told me that she wants a Shake Shack so it looks like I'm having two Shake Shacks this evening. Um, I also still don't know what we're going to see but I do know that we're meeting at Shake Shack Victoria and near Victoria, I think there are two or three musicals. I know Wicked is near Victoria, which I've not seen since I was in school. Hamilton is near Victoria, um, which I've never seen, and Charlie's cousin Elliot's wife. I went to Kelly and Elliot's wedding um, a couple of years ago. Kelly is in Hamilton, so I'll be super excited to see her if it's that. And then I think there's something called Heather's, but I might have made that up. But either way, I'm gonna hit the road, grab a taxi, and meet Freddie over in Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my little... <laughs> no, wait, who suggested Shake Shack? Oh, it, it was me, wasn't it? It was you, and then you said you already had <laughs> Yay, thank you. What have you got? Uh, oh my god, he put, has he put... No, I'm not eating that. Oh no, I take it back. Oh, we're going to see you again. Hello. Hello. Well, I'm with my darling, and she has treated me to a surprise evening at I'm so excited to I be I was here. with the tickets this morning and I didn't tell her. I was like, I'm just booking tickets and it could be a surprise. And you I'll... look so glamorous. I do. I've been on a shoot today. Look at these earrings. earrings. They are stunning. by Lara Heems Jewelry. And they, look, they're roses. You see that they're roses and then a pearl. They literally look like thousands and thousands of pounds of diamond jewelry. I never I'm wear so earrings like this. But, like, but it's like made me feel so glam and I love it. So I think I need to start. I think I need to get a pair. Good morning, my darlings. I'm sorry about the noise of the dustbin lorry behind me. I got up at six o'clock this morning. It's currently 6.45, and I've actually booked myself in for a Reformer Pilates at Flow London. I decided to reactivate my class pass, which I'll tell you a little bit about later, because I thought if I'm gonna keep doing these overnight stays in London, then I might as well try out some of my some exercise studios and I haven't found a really good reformer Pilates in the Cotswolds yet although stay tuned on that because I think I actually just have but anyway I'm gonna do a reformer class 
at Flow London this morning and I'll report back. Well, I look like a super kino, first one here. But this looks exactly like the kind of reformers that we used to use um, when I did it every morning. Not every morning, <laughs> three times a week in Clapham. Can't remember the name of the place. I think it was Mojo. Um, but yeah, this should be good. Well, a proper good morning to you, my darlings. You might be wondering why I'm vlogging on my phone. I normally really dislike vlogging on my phone, um, but I've had a little bit of a drama <laughs> this morning. The class was great, a really good 45 minutes reformer Pilates. Um, great way to start the day. It was a 20 minute walk from here. During that 20 minutes, the screw top on the, bot on the bottle of water that I had in my bag and I didn't finish all my water during the class unscrewed itself, slash I never screwed it on properly to begin with, um, and essentially poured half a bottle of water all over my camera. So at the moment, I don't even know if I should be picking this up. Can you see a flash going on in here? It's literally shorting itself. I think, oh my gosh. I think it's actually the flash of the camera. Yeah, just continuously going off. Oh, I have broken so many of these cameras. So safe to say I am very, very annoyed with myself, but I've just got myself ready. How lovely is the bathroom in here? I hope this um, camera quality is okay. It's such a nice bathroom. I've just finished packing up all of my bits and bobs. I highly recommend these bags. They're from the Flat Lay Company. So I have all my skincare bits in here and all my makeup bits in there, um, daily makeup and things like that. And it's just a really great way of having everything with me and you can just open them up. Um, you can see everything, great to rummage around. I have of course bought my hair burst vitamins with me. I, gosh, how long has it been now? I think I've been taking these for six or seven months. And for me, the main thing that I'm noticing the difference with is probably the breakage because my hair, and you'll have to excuse the fact that I've literally got day three hair today, but I've actually got a facial later. So I didn't see the point in washing my hair after the class. My hair, because I do get it colored, you know what I'm like when I open these, I literally have to eat them straight away because they're so delicious. They're these chewable um, strawberry gummies. <laughs> so literally my favorite part of the morning is taking my vitamins. Um, so yeah, they are strawberry and blackcurrant flavor, which just makes them absolutely delicious. And for me, the main thing is actually breakage. So I know a lot of friends take these if they've got hair that's maybe um, a little bit thinner and they want to help it get a little bit thicker, a little bit healthier. Um, but for me, because I get my hair coloured, I would previously find quite a lot of breakage around the front here especially because I get bleach put in my hair, which is or can be rather damaging. Um, and whenever I go to a hairdresser, they always say, Josie, your hair is in such good condition. And yes, I use conditioners, really nice products, but I always think that if you can take something from within, then that's gonna be a lot more effective. My little hair burst gummies, they contain biotin, selenium, and zinc, which are the main ingredients for helping maintain healthy hair. Um, but I think they also have benefits when it comes to your skin and your nails and something that I'm also quite conscious of is my eyebrows. <laughs> they haven't really, I've said this in the past when I've spoken about hair first, but my eyebrows hadn't grown for years and years and years and now I actually have to get them um, threaded <laughs> because they're finally starting to grow again. But my hair is naturally thin, but I have a lot of it, but it's more those little shorter hairs around my parting and around the hairline here that I wanted to give a little bit of a boost. So for me, that's what Hair Burst has been amazing for. I'm really happy with the length, but again, I've got friends that take it to help grow the hair. And I do think with vitamins, regularity is really, really important. So that's why I bought them with me because I am literally taking these every single day. I took them up to Scotland with me. I had them in my suitcase in Charleston and I highly recommend them. They work for me. I enjoy taking them. They're super delicious. So I'll leave them linked in the description box down below, darlings, in case you'd like to check it out. Um, but now I need to figure out how I am gonna get to my first meeting of the day. It is in Covent Garden, so I'm not got too far to go. Gosh, I just heard my camera making a kind of snap noise. Hopefully it doesn't burst into flames in my bag. So I'm just going to have to apologize that the vlogging for the morning at least is going to be on my phone and I'm going to get onto Amazon and order myself a new camera, hopefully with the next day delivery so that we don't have to put up with iPhone vlogging for too much longer. <laughs>
finished up with our first meeting of the day and our next port of call is at the Corinthia. We have got a morning discovering the Espa Modern Alchemy range and Espa actually designed the spa here at the Corinthia as well as obviously the treatments and you can buy and use the Modern Alchemy products at home. Um, so we're going to have a bit of an immersive morning learning about the products, the ingredients, I believe we have a sand bath experience as well which I'm very much looking forward to um, and then the reason I'm in the changing room which by the way is the most beautiful changing room I think I've ever seen. You get your own little kind of like pod area with lockers, a shower and a changing space. Um, I actually get to have a 90 minute treatment after our um, kind of immersive morning. So really looking forward to that. They sound absolutely heavenly, so I will report back. So this is the gorgeous treatment room and you start by having a grounding ritual with the hot shells under your feet and a foot um, cleansing experience and then you basically have to see which of these cards appeals to you the most grounding joy and gratitude also looking at the colors and the crystals just see which one appeals to you the most actually to me today this one the joy and gratitude appeals to me the most so then you get the relevant crystal placed in your hand and the treatment is just slightly tweaked um, based on what you're drawn to that day so now I'm so now I'm gonna zone out and I'll see you in an hour. Hello again, my darlings. It's 90 minutes or so later. I'm actually quite grateful not to have a working vlogging camera right now because I am half slicked in oil and absolutely not complaining. That was one of the most, if not the most relaxing 90 minutes of my entire life. Such a different kind of treatment. Started off as I think I showed you with a grounding ritual. So instead of, you know, just the usual kind of um, washing of the feet and straight into bed. You have a heated, weighted wheat bag popped on your shoulders and you have the warm um, rocks underneath your feet and it's all about grounding yourself, ready for the treatment. The whole idea of the modern alchemy range is just getting away from the stresses of everyday life and really improving your mindset and your body and how you feel by taking those precious moments to yourself and a grounding ritual is a really great place to start. Um, and then the treatment was just unlike anything I've ever had. It was not necessarily like one part of the body and, the ne and then the next. It was all focused around circular movements, inspired by the full moon, the figure of eight. I had the harmony treatment. Um, there are three treatments in total and I definitely need to try the other two. And it was really just kind of all over the body. I didn't know where she was gonna go next. It wasn't predictable in the slightest. Gorgeous products from the Aspar Modern Alchemy range, which I've actually got in my goodie bag here to try. The products have been available actually since last year, but the treatments have only just launched. They literally launched today. So I feel very, very lucky to, to be one of the first to have got to try them. Um, but while the changing room is not too busy, in fact, there are some areas where there are no people in here, so I'm going to give you a little tour because Espa actually designed the spa here at the Corinthia and it is one of the most beautiful spas I've ever seen. So I've just been relaxing on these. These are actually heated marble beds. They're so comfortable. You've got these fireplaces throughout. There must be about 50 fireplaces down here in the spa. The design is all based on these curves, which kind of mimics the style of the treatment as well. You've got this incredible shower area. Of course, with Espar products. This looks like one of those jets that comes at you from the side. <laughs> Rain shower. And then you've got a steam room through here, linen section. Sauna. Gosh, I could easily get lost in here. Good morning, my darlings. I am back home in the Cotswolds after a lovely couple of days in London and of course I am going to give you a kitchen oh, I've got hiccups <laughs> I'm going to give you a kitchen garden update Charlie has just informed me that what are they about to do we have um, you know the big stone trough the water feature yeah <coughs> being moved into its, into its 
final resting place. Right. And hopefully because we've got some clear blue sky days ahead of us for the next five or so days. Ten days, hopefully. Gosh, I think they'll be making a start on the greenhouse. So what we need to decide with this is they're doing one layer, they're going to let it dry, and then tomorrow we need to decide if we like the colour or not. Oh, right. And if we don't, then they need to mix some more sand in. I see. I, I, I don't know yet if that's perfect or not. Mm -hmm. It's difficult because with the house there's so many different colours, but what we need to do is decide on what we like as a mix, because we're planning on doing a lot of repointing on this side of the house. Let's just quickly go to it because I can show you. Over the next sort of year, the plan is, and this is what they don't tell you when you buy an old house, right? The concept is a bit of a mess around here, so if you look at how it's been patched up over the years, mm -hmm. what you really need to do is find a mix, which is like a, I don't know entirely, but a cement and lime and sand mix, and then stick to that recipe so yeah. that it's the same colour. Because to give you an idea, to repoint all of this would probably take... I don't know, three months. Wow. Because they've got to chip out all of the existing pointing. <clears throat> so you don't just do it over it, you have to remove and then redo it. Mm. Um, so we're, we, when we have our uh, drain pipe, new lovely lead drain pipe coming, yep. they're going to start the repointing process and probably do like half of this this summer. Does it urgently need doing? We'll all look at, look at behind the drain pipe. Oh, sheesh That's kebabs. Where the water's wow. So, yes, it answers your question. Mm. And then Obviously, we'll have um, platforms. So they're going to probably do like that section, and then we'll go. What I'm saying is, if we agree on a mix we love here, yeah, then we eventually will do this whole side in that mix, right? And then on the f at the um, not the front of the house because that's fine, but the side of the house next summer or probably the summer after. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be summer, but it needs to be like after the last frost. Oh right. Apparently, but I don't think that's happened yet this year. No, no, no. So it no. won't be happening until. Yeah, so anyway, bit of oh. info. So that's the plan. You still got your info? I've got it. I mean, to be honest with you, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So we get to appreciate it this spring. And yeah. And before they leave, we empty it out and we get rid of it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Or we can do that after they leave. It just, it just needs to be. Empty. What I was thinking is, you see those two troughs there? Yeah. I think we just put lavender in those because it's all mixed. And stuff it's quite like a shady it. spot there, though. Don't know if lavender would do well. I think we just need some bigger ferns. Hmm. Oh, we've got two little boys waiting. <laughs> two lovelies. Good morning from me. I did a half an hour peloton this morning, freshly showered and freshly curled hair, slightly um, ringletty at the moment. I'm hoping it's gonna drop out so that I can do some filming later on because actually the day that you're watching this is the first day of spring and I haven't done my Fashion Mumbler spring edit for a couple of years now and I think before lo lockdown I'd maybe done my Fashion Mumbler spring edit for maybe five years running so I thought maybe I would bring it back this year so yeah I might film might film a fashion video this afternoon which is why I have added some curls into my hair um, but I've got a few packages here that have arrived while I was in London so I thought I'd do a little bit of an unboxing with you. I'm gonna prop you up on <laughs> a candle and hope for the best. So the first delivery of which is actually a Zara home delivery. Um, I think it was potentially an article on Sheer Lux that shared, I think it was actually a place setting, like a placemat that was on Zara home and that made me click onto their website and do a fairly sizable order. Now it's really funny because obviously here in the house we have loved like antiques and more kind of 
countryside style crockery for quite some time. Um, it's not necessarily been in fashion, it's just been the style that Charlie and I love and have loved for many years. But funnily enough, that kind of style seems to be coming into fashion and Zara Home, they even have some pots which look like antique um, or like terracotta plant pots, which is so funny that it's done the full circle and that is now on trend. I didn't buy the Sara terracotta pot because we have so many authentic versions that we can buy around here that that seemed a bit silly. But what I did buy, oh, this is actually really interesting, this first piece. And again, this is something that when I bought the full, you guys might know what I mean, the burly pottery set that I purchased about six months ago now, that was, and slash, is not necessarily something that's on trend. It's just something that's really quite typical of like an English country house and something that I just personally absolutely love the look of. And then I saw this on Zara and it's just such a similar kind of vibe. Now that I'm seeing this up close, I mean, it's really nothing compared to the real deal. I will leave Burley Pottery link down below, um, but Burley, don't do these kind of big platters. And it's something that I thought would be really useful for dinner parties. So I thought this would be a really nice addition to the collection. Looking at this, it's really obvious. It's kind of like um, a picture that's been, you know, I'm not sure how they would do it, but it's almost like pixelated. Whereas the Burley pottery, you can really see almost the individual brush strokes. The Burley is a heck of a lot better quality. Um, but this is a lot more affordable and very similar style. And to be honest, I think when it's on the table with my burly stuff, you really won't notice any difference. And then to kind of match that, I thought this was really quite lovely as well. So this is more like a um, stew pot or a casserole dish. Now I'm really hoping that this will be oven proof because it's almost a little bit useless if it's not, but you do again have that really gorgeous green floral pattern. Um, you've got very delicate florals on the lid, and this is just gonna be really, really nice for serving things, whether it's, you could even put like a pasta dish in here or roast potatoes. I think that'll look really lovely on the table when my table is all laid up with the beautiful burly pottery. Um, and again, this kind of design, this shape of crockery item is not something that burly themselves actually offer. It does say underneath made in Portugal and according to Rory, Portugal is getting really good at ceramic pieces. So um, yeah, it's not made in England like the burly stuff, but it does feel really good quality. So these here are the pieces that I saw on Sheer Lux and that made me actually want to do the order. I don't know why, but they always seem to make these under mats really huge. Um, I feel like they could have been a good like inch in diameter, smaller, and that would have been perfect. But I thought especially for spring and summer, eating outside, the set that I have previously, I actually don't have enough of and can, <laughs> um, and can no longer buy the exact same ones I currently have. So I ordered 12 of these. We don't often have more than 12 people. And if we do, then I don't necessarily, then I don't necessarily need to use place settings, but I really liked the kind of scalloped edge on these. I thought it looked a little bit, a little bit floral. So perfect for our outside table. And then the final piece, I actually thought it's better lighting wise to show you up here on the kitchen table is this lovely tablecloth. And it's this beautiful kind of fresh, almost eucalyptus -y shade. It's not quite as earthy, I would say, as the sage green, um, a little bit more fresh. And I'm imagining mostly using this again on the outside table. Now I'm not 100% sure if they match, but we're getting, well, they don't, it's not the same color green, but I don't think that looks too bad together. We're thinking of getting some cushions made for the new outside table in this fabric, which is the strap work fabric from fabricsandpapers.com. We've been getting a lot of samples from them. Now that I see the two together, I'm not sure if this is the right shade. Um, I kind of wish it was a little bit more earthy, but hmm, you guys let me know what you think down below. Should I keep the tablecloth or should I keep looking for something a little bit closer in tone to this one? Okay, up next, as you can see, I did, <laughs> I did start to have a little rummage in here and then I thought I would open it with you. You can probably guess by the iconic pink packaging that this is a delivery from Beauty Pie. As you guys know, I am a huge, huge fan of Beauty Pie. 
I have been for quite a few months now. Um, how it works is Beauty Pie is essentially a membership that you join online um, and then you have access to the incredible catalogue of incredible products that Beauty Pie have on their website. And what they do is they essentially um, work with the same factories, the same production places that make so many super luxury, expensive, iconic beauty products, but you're not paying for the branding, you're not paying for the marketing, and Beauty Pie brings them to us for as near to cost price as possible so you're not paying for crazy markup and by getting the beauty pie membership you have access to those savings and so many of the products that beauty pie and pretty much everything that i've tried from beauty pie i just absolutely love in fact um they've actually popped a note in here saying that the code Josie sent me which gives you £10 off your membership when you sign up as a new member is still active so I would highly 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 recommend um, a Beauty Pie membership so I'll leave all of the links and everything to sign up to Beauty Pie down below um, and also I'm going to pop a little screenshot up here of my Instagram page I just yesterday started a new highlight and on that highlight I'm going to keep all the discount codes that I have when I work with brands I'm going to keep popping all of the discount codes on that highlight there so if you ever are shopping somewhere whether it's a jewelry retailer or all plants bloom and wild flowers you can just go to that highlight and um, see if there's a discount code something that I also added to that highlight yesterday was class pass because I do have a link where you can get 14 days free trial for class pass which I would again highly recommend downloading because it works. Sorry, I keep having to stop filming and start again because we've got people coming in and out of the house today and for some reason I've decided to prop you up in the living room and it's obviously very awkward <laughs> sat here talking to the camera when we've got people coming into the house. Um, but what was I saying? Class pass. Yes, when um, Charlie and I went to Dallas a few years ago, we used it there to join. I think we did Barry's boot camp in Dallas. We used it um, a few times when we last went to New York and I think, oh hello my deck deck. I think if you live in the US especially, but basically loads of major cities all around the world, how it works is you get, um, similar I guess to Beauty Pie, you get a number of credits each month. I think my membership has like 60 credits and then you can use those credits to join in various fitness classes even if you're not a member of that particular fitness club. So um, the Milo and the Bull rowing classes that we used to do in Clapham, I would book that on Class Pass. The Reform Pilates that I did yesterday morning is on Class Pass. Um, so it's a really nice way of trying out new studios and yeah I think my code is for 14 day free trial so again that's on my Instagram highlights and I'll also leave a link down below but back to beauty pie so I believe oops, here we have got some of this month's new launches they launch I think it's something new every Wednesday which is amazing I'm very excited to try these I'm always interested in um, beauty sponges because they're really hit and miss like you can get a really good beauty sponge or you can get some really really bad ones they feel <laughs> literally exactly the same as beauty blenders and you get so many in here one two three four five six i think you've got eight in here oh five full size and five mini ten beauty sponges i'll leave the beauty pie price of these um up on the screen here they feel really really nice so i'll report back when i'm doing my makeup tomorrow Ooh, okay oh my gosh okay so this is extreme relief seeker moisture cream called happy face and then from their super dose vitamin c range amazing and this is a moisturizing shea butter hand cream i'm always saying how you have to take just as good care of your hands as you do your face. Especially if you're driving, you know, they're off on the steering wheel, they're getting sun exposure. So a vitamin C hand cream with brightening tranexamic tran acid and biovitamin C. I bet this is gonna smell incredible. It's nice to think that your hand cream is offering something in addition to just moisturization. <sighs> the smell is so good and it feels like it's one of those hand creams that just absorbs super quickly as well so over time this is going to help with the brightening of my hands i'm i literally just this morning finished off my vitamin c body lotion from beauty pie so i'm going to add that to my next month's order and then seeker is an ingredient that's really really soothing really calming i probably could have done with this the week after i had that crazy peel because my skin was just 
Dye Mad, suitable for dry, sensitive, rosacea prone skin with a biomimetric ceramide gel matrix and centella asiatica. Smooth generously onto well cleansed skin over a lotion or soothing moisture serum morning and or evening. So I'm guessing if, ooh, it's kind of like a gel consistency. I'm guessing if you've got sensitive or rosacea prone skin and you just want something that's really calming, that feels lovely. I will of course be giving all of these a test for you and letting you know how I get along. And then one final really lovely delivery has arrived from Aurelia, which is such a gorgeous skincare brand. It is the brand that you'll experience if you go for a treatment at time. And let's see, they have launched a new probiotic lip balm, cushioning luxurious formula infused with Proteida, which is Aurelia's signature probiotic pro um, probiotic ingredient for all day hydration and protection, caring for the delicate lip area at a cellular level. Oh my gosh. How beautiful is this? We've got this gorgeous little mini pink ruffly pillow. Oh my goodness. That is just the sweetest thing. It's like a raw linen ruffly pillow. How gorgeous is that? I'm trying to think where I can put this in the house. And then nestled in here we have got the probiotic lip balm their packaging is so gorgeous no plastic either sleek and beautiful black pot gold writing there we go here is the new aurelia lip balm i have got some lipstick on now but i always think you can add balm on top of a lipstick and then it just gives it more of a balmy kind of comfortable feel Aurelia products always smell so good as well. I know it sounds a bit bougie, but this would actually be a really nice pillow for when you're traveling in a long car journey or on an airplane. It's just the perfect size. I think I'm gonna put this in my travel cupboard. Kinda of wanna keep the bow on as well. It just looks so cute. Right, now I need to tidy all of these products away. Okay, back upstairs in my dressing room. I'm kind of having second thoughts about doing a fashion edit week next week now because I feel like my channel has just kind of moved away from these dedicated fashion videos and I'm just not sure if it's the kind of thing that you guys want to see. So this video is going up on Sunday, um, so maybe you can let me know in the comments section down below if dedicated fashion videos is what you would like to see or not. <laughs> and then if it is, then maybe I can do something throughout the next week or maybe I'll just integrate a little bit more um, spring fashion into my vlogs which is actually what i'm going to do right now because i was i was going to save this for its own video but i just want to dig into this box right now so a couple of days ago i placed a really big order on matches and this is just a totally normal customer order i've never worked with them didn't use a voucher or any kind of press discounts so this is just <laughs> just as an fyi uh so i thought we could do a little unboxing together this i think is my Receipt, yep, that's all the information in there. Really nicely packaged in tissue paper. Your matches fashion order was carefully pass packaged by Gulling. So this is mostly oh, some beautiful spring dresses. I feel like spring, spring is officially here the day that you're watching this video and I feel like the sun's coming out, it's starting to feel a lot more optimistic, and this is a time of year that I just love more than any other when it comes to the fashions. Matches is an online destination for premium and luxury brands, so these are all pretty luxurious pieces. This first dress is by Amelia Wickstead. Now, because of the price points of these, obviously they are going to have to be really special for me to keep them. I don't know if you could get away with wearing this as a wedding guest. I feel like you probably could. I, th I think it's got enough. I mean, the whole point of wedding guest etiquette is not to upstage the bride. And obviously wearing a full on white outfit, you're treading a fine line. But I think having a white base and then blue florals on a wedding guest outfit is totally acceptable. I would be thrilled if someone wore something as lovely as this to my wedding. Um, so I think I might do a little try on for you. So. I'll show you how this looks on. So my darlings, first we have got the Amelia Wickstead dress and I'm not gonna lie, I feel as though this dress is actually a little bit too mature for me and I know I often dress maybe a little bit older than my actual age but there's something about this dress, it just kind of feels as though, I don't know, it almost, 
it just feels a little bit more mature than what I would normally go for, especially for a special occasion. The material is a really beautiful, thick material. It feels almost structured, but there's actually no boning in the bodice, but where there's so many layers of fabric, it just fits the body beautifully. If I come a little bit closer, you might be able to see it's really tailored to precision. It's got lots of different panels that give it the most gorgeous silhouette. It does have, I believe it's got pockets. Oh, maybe not. No, it doesn't. Um, the flower fabric, the pattern on this is quite sensational. The skirt length and shape is really, really beautiful. I do feel that this would, do you know what? Actually, the more I'm looking at it, the more I think I'm falling in love with this. It does fit absolutely gorgeously. If anything, maybe the straps could be taken up by, I don't know, a couple of centimeters. As a wedding guest, I would say it's absolutely perfect. I think because there are so many panels in the skirt, it really gives it um, that shape. It's almost, do you know what? It's got way more fabric at the back than it does at the front. So I don't know if you can see, it's really fluted at the back there, which is such a gorgeous design detail. Does it dip down a little bit? I'm not sure, I almost prefer Hopefully you can see in the vlog camera what I'm seeing in the mirror. I almost prefer how the skirt looks from behind than in the front. There's almost double, if not triple, the amount of fabric. That's so funny. When I first put it on, I just, I didn't really feel that magic. But now that I'm looking at it in the mirror, it is quite a sensational dress. It really is. I think if you have a really beautiful maybe like english country garden style wedding to attend this would be absolutely perfect or a really special garden party if you're going to the races you wouldn't be allowed into the royal enclosure at ascot wearing this because the straps are actually too thin but henley regatta i don't know a really special tea party <laughs> i feel like those are such english recommendations of events you could be going to this summer um but yeah quality wise and fit i think this is just absolutely beautiful i don't have anything in the diary at the moment that i can think of that i could wear this to but maybe i will i think maybe i'll hold on to it for when that perfect event does arise now up next this looks really quite special on the website. It is the most beautiful dress from Erdem. And Erdem pieces are a very premium price point. You've got this gorgeous bell style on the sleeves. It is a shirt style uh, kind of silhouette. It's quite thin. It's certainly, I have to be honest, the quality actually doesn't feel that exceptional. I'm sure it's probably just a cotton dress, but really it's the pattern that blew me away and that I thought was absolutely gorgeous the most lovely dress for wearing around the house during spring and summer and also for you know days out exploring the Cotswolds things like that but I have to be honest if like H&M or River Island did a dress in this fabric I think I'd love it just as much I don't I mean I haven't tried it on yet but I don't really see what is so special about this that makes it that price point but let's give it a go and we can um <laughs> see if I'm proved wrong Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> I did not want to fall in love with this dress. I really didn't. But it is just absolute perfection. As you can see, I have added my Zimmerman... Uh, yes, it is Zimmerman. My Zimmerman um, straw kind of raffia waist belt. I've been adding this to a lot of dresses recently. And I really think it is what this dress needed. Nothing with any logos or anything. I'm sure you can get something like this really affordably from... I don't know, like ASOS or Amazon even, because this actually came with one of my Zimmerman play suits. So I'll try and find something similar and link it down below. Um, but this dress really needed it. I feel like it needed that separation between the bodice and the skirt. It needed a little bit of form fitting. <sighs> Do you know what? This dress is one of those pieces that makes me really want to start my own clothing line because it's really the fabric that has won me over here. Um, yes, the silhouette is beautiful. Like, if you look closely, it's actually a few different tiers of fabric. So it's actually different, um, yeah, different tiers of fabric, which does give it that A-line shape. And then, of course, you've got the sleeve detail. I mean, those are details that really are not that hard to create, but the high street just doesn't do that. And it is these details that make all the difference, but really not that hard to do. This dress is, I mean, it's Adam, so it is a very expensive dress, 
but it's just so me. <laughs> I, can, I can see myself getting a lot of wear out of this throughout spring and summer and it's one of those things that is very timeless in its style so I think I'm going to treat myself with my little green Loewe basket bag or is that too much green? I'm not sure. It really is so lovely. I don't know if it needs the bell shape on the sleeves, but it's just a nice little extra design detail. Do we have pockets? So much fabric here, you have to really rummage around. I feel like there's probably no pockets in this. Maybe it'd look better actually with just a plain white basket bag. Oh, I knew this would happen. I knew I would say to you guys, oh, it's a little bit overpriced, it's above my budget, and then I knew as soon as I tried on that I would just <laughs> Just absolutely fall in love with it and that's exactly what's happened i really do adore it <laughs> it's so beautiful do you know what i think i've got hay fever because my eyes have been so itchy lately sorry too much information but if i'm looking a bit bleary eyed that is why i'm just thinking of you know events that i've got coming up days for meetings in london family dinners sunday roasts mother's mother's day um this is actually definitely what i'm gonna wear on Mother's Day, I think I'll probably match it with, I'm all about mixing <laughs> high street and high end. So these are my lovely little River Island um, sandals. I love how they go with my other store accessories. Yeah, I think this is definitely my Mother's Day outfit. If you've got a slightly more casual wedding to go to, this could work for that. Family Sunday lunch for Easter. Yeah, so many different occasions I can see myself wearing this too. And I have now officially, <laughs> talk to myself into keeping this dress. Now this next dress, I remember, gosh, I think it was nearly a thousand pounds. So it would have to be seriously special again for me to keep this. But again, I just love the color. The sleeves are really quite striking. Ooh, got a little bit of a, got a bit of a, you've got a slight hint of red inside the sleeves. I don't know if this is gonna be special enough to justify the price. Um, I think I just kind of fell in love with the color, but not too sure what kind of occasions I would wear this to, so let's see. So I actually have a feeling that this dress is called the Josephine dress, but even with that in mind, I think unfortunately I'm not going to be keeping this one. I can say from the word go, the sleeves are just a little bit too voluminous. It's a little bit handmade tail for my liking. I've actually already tried on, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, the green Erdem dress, and this just price-wise and how much I would wear it wise, it doesn't even compare. And I definitely can't keep two dresses, spoiler alert if you haven't seen that bit yet. I definitely can't keep two of the more expensive dresses from this order. So yeah, I, I can definitely appreciate the design detail on this. I mean, the way that the skirt hangs, the pleats in the fabric are really quite, really quite special. And that is what you pay for with these kinds of, um, these kind of brands, but it's just, not special enough to um, justify the price, unfortunately. And also, I feel like these sleeves just get super creased. Okay, this is a brand called Thierry Colson, and I'm loving this really small floral pattern at the moment, kind of like a ditzy floral. And yes, I potentially would have preferred it if the floral was in a green tone, um, but I thought it was really gorgeous in blue as well. Quite a casual everyday spring dress and the price point on this was considerably cheaper than the previous um, designers <laughs> that I've just shown you. So yeah, I've got good feelings about this one. I think this has to be my favorite dress so far. The pattern is just absolutely gorgeous. It's so fun. So many different little balloons and little birds and leaves in here. I really love the silhouette. You've got this really voluminous sleeve style. Something about the fabric makes it still seem, in a way, quite relaxed and casual, as well as the pockets, um, the bow around the waist. And yet, because there's so much fabric, it really does make a statement. But for me, for a spring everyday dress, this is just absolutely perfect. I think it would probably clash with my green Loewe, let's see. I'm not sure if the blue and the green go that well together. Maybe the pink. That looks absolutely adorable together. I'm pulling the sleeves up because I feel that you need to see a little bit more skin with this dress because otherwise it can be, like if I pull them down, I feel like it's almost too much dress and not enough, not enough of me, if that makes sense. It maybe swamps me a tiny bit because I'm quite short. Um, but yeah, with the sleeves up, this is, 
pretty much my perfect everyday spring dress and if you do live in a warm country with it being cotton it's a really nice breathable fabric so could be a really nice work dress if you're able to wear things like this to the office and I love that obviously with the bow tie you can just cinch it in make it as form-fitting as you want or you could tie it up a little bit looser after lunch love the pockets really romantic silhouette yeah this is definitely a keeper this is a brand that I've not heard of before, it's called C New York and it's a really beautiful <laughs> white dress. I have a thing for white dresses as you may know, especially at this time of year. Really interesting cutout detail and the cutout detail extends to the back. You've got this smock detail, I don't know if you can see smock detail at the back here. And then almost like heart shaped cutouts, which I think are really fun. We're going to have some voluminous sleeves, we've got an elasticated waistband, a lovely elegant length. First impressions, it looks like a very Josie dress. So let's give it a try. Well, super predictably, I just am in love with the white dress. Do I need another one? Absolutely not. But this would be my first <laughs> white dress of spring summer 2022. It's got this really lovely back detail. So you've got this cut out section here and then smocking in the middle of the back with these two little bow ties. We have got these pockets, which again, which just give it that slightly more casual look. And then you've got puff sleeves and it's almost like a little apron detail on the front here, which I think is really unusual. And I love that these big hearts what do you guys think? Do I need another white dress? I also, not sure if you can see, but I love how down here at the bottom, the hearts almost create a little bit of a scallop detail. And with a basket bag, maybe, ooh, what about my new Loewe? I feel like I didn't really show you guys this that much. It just kind of appeared in my Charleston videos, but to add a little bit of green to the outfit, I feel like that is just, I need to start wearing this as my everyday handbag. It's perfect for this time of year. I'm such a huge fan of basket bags. Um, and yeah, I think together they look absolutely adorable. So let me know what you guys think to this little number. This here is another one from a brand that I'd not heard of before. What I did was I just typed in cotton dresses into um, matches and had a little look at what came up. And this is a brand called Juliet Dunn. And again, I just thought the pattern on this was really, really pretty. You've got this little button detail going down the front, yellow ribbon trim, this lovely kind of scallop trimming on the edges, and then the straps tie up to be these little bows on your shoulders. I love these sweet little pockets as well. So yeah, hopefully this looks really nice on. Now this really is quite lovely. I like the relaxed style with the bows on the sleeves. I think that's really pretty. I always like to bring the bows further forward. I know you're probably meant to wear them literally up here, but I always like to be able to see the bows. The fabric is really gorgeous. I love this pattern on it. It actually feels quite um, time-esque as in Bertioli by time. And I, re and I really, really love the little lemon detail on the pockets. It's funny, the pockets feel as though they're very much on the side <laughs> instead of at the front, but maybe that is where you would naturally stand with your hands in your pockets. It feels very kind of Italian maiden, is what I wanted to say. Um, a really lovely lightweight dress, perfect for summer days. Let's see. It's one of those dresses where if it's really expensive, it's just not worth it, but... Uh, no. Oh no, Juliet Dunn. Okay, £220. I think this is actually the trickiest decision of the whole order because I do love it, but is it blowing me away like the dresses that I'm definitely keeping from the order? I'm not sure. And I have got Zimmerman dresses, which are very similar, that potentially I love more that are already in my wardrobe, but I do love it. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think. I think this is one where I definitely need your opinions because I love it. But I do have similar things. Mm. This is a tough one. And then lastly, what was the brand of this one? I think it was another that I hadn't heard of before. Emporio Cyrenuse. Um, and the Cyrenuse is actually, is that how you say it? Cyrenuse is actually a really lovely hotel, one that I'd love to stay in, um, in Positano. And I think they launched their clothing range maybe two or three years ago. This is the first item that I've ever tried from them. And interesting that they sell their pieces on matches. I wonder if time, look 
at Emporio Sirenu saying what they're doing with their clothing range as a little bit of inspo for their Bertioli by Time collection because I can't think of many other hotels that really do that kind of thing. But yeah, anyway, really nice um, lightweight dress, beautiful pleat detail down here at the bottom. Could be a gorgeous summer day dress, so let's give it a try. Well, this really is a lovely dress, but it does need quite a lot of altering on me. It would need to be bought up a couple of inches on the sleeves so it fits me correctly on the bodice and then I also think it would need a couple of inches ticking in around the waist and do I think this dress is worth all of those alterations? I mean it is a really gorgeous pockets no, I don't think so. Um, it is a really gorgeous summer holiday dress, really beautiful lightweight material, but for me personally, I just don't think it's quite worth the investment with the alterations as well. Um, so if it fit me properly, then I, it would have been a real contender, but just being totally honest, it's not quite, not quite special enough for me to justify keeping it. Um, considering I'd have to make some changes, but if you've got some nice holidays coming up and you buy this and it fits you perfectly, then I think it is an absolutely gorgeous dress. You can see it's really gaping down there, but if I brought it up a little bit, yeah, it would be gorgeous if only it fit. <laughs> so the final verdict, although I haven't decided on this dress yet, is that I'm definitely keeping these two. I think this is the most expensive from my order and this is the most affordable. Funny how things like that happen. I'm definitely gonna check this brand out more, Thierry Coulson, and I've got a feeling that they do have this dress in green. And if they do, I'm definitely gonna get it. I think with the waist belt, it's just so pretty. Yeah, this is a real splurge, a huge treat, um, but I do absolutely adore it. Oh, I've got the eight. I wonder if they do this in a six, because I think it'd be even better if it was a tiny bit smaller. But I absolutely adore it. And then I've popped everything else, again, aside from this one, because I haven't decided, in the box as my returns. So let me know what you guys think about the Juliet dress. It is really lovely, perfect little summer dress. But do I need it? Oh, it's so lovely. Ah, you guys need to help me out with this one. Dashboard cam is back. I've got a car full of boxes, because I think Charlie's filled up the car with stuff for Straw Top Cottage. Um, but never mind, I'm off to get my nails done. They actually don't desperately, oops, they actually don't desperately need doing. I've got builder gel on them at the moment to try and grow them up again. But when you get given a slot with Haley, you take it, especially if, especially because I have something really fun in the diary for tomorrow. Um, for the journey, I'm gonna listen to Claudia Winkleman's podcast. It's called Business Unusual, and someone actually recommended it to me yesterday. And um, on the way back from London, I listened to quite a few episodes. She's basically interviewing founders, UK founders of various companies. She did one with Vivian and Howard Wong, who founded Little Moons. I did not realize, <gasps> pheasant on the drive. Drive. Excuse you, senor. I don't want to run you over, but you're in my way. Scoot your boot. Go on, you can fly. Fly over the hedge. I'm just going to sit here until he moves because I don't want to scare him. Um, yeah, Vivian and Howard Wong, who are the founders of Little Moon's Mochi Balls, the ones that I'm always going on about from Mercado. And I didn't realise, but they essentially invented that kind of dessert. He's just sat in the hedge. I'm just going to have to go really, really slowly. I didn't realise that that wasn't a thing until Little Moon's, and it was Little Moon's. Just keeping an eye on the pheasant. You stay away. No, why do they do that? Why do they run in front of you? You're so like Dickie. No, just stay where you are. He's literally running alongside me, look. Can you see, he's literally following the car. You're so silly. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> this story is taking a lot longer than I had planned. I thought that mochi balls were like a thing from Japanese um, food culture and had been forever. Correct me if I'm wrong, by the way, this might be completely wrong, but the the gist that I got from the podcast with Claudia Winkleman is that mochi is actually just the like jelly rice thing and maybe it could be that jelly rice um, or rice jelly enveloping something but Little Moons are the ones that used this mochi 
rice jelly and put it around ice cream. I thought that was what mochi was, but I think Little Moons put the mochi around the ice cream. Um, but yeah, I might be wrong. But anyway, that company is now worth something like 100 million pounds. They make something like 25 million mochi balls every single year. And it's just amazing, absolutely incredible. So that was a fascinating podcast. I also listened to one, um, these are literally her first ever ones, about, what is his name, Freddy, who founded, that's a really cool registration plate on this Porsche, it looks like it says linen, very cool. She was FaceTiming. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Freddie that founded Patch Plant. That's another business that I'm like, Charlie, why did you not start this company? He was basically saying how um, it's really, it was really, really hard to get plants when you live in a city. And Charlie and I used to find this, like you've got to remember, Charlie and I have been into gardening for, well, like seven or eight years now. It's not just since we moved here. We've always loved gardening. And it was only really when we got our car that we were able to buy new plants for our um, garden in Clapham because you can't exactly fill the back of an Uber up with plants. I mean, you could, that's what the founder of Patch said that he used to do. But whenever my mum came over before we had our Mazda, we'd be like, oh, Lala, can we please go to the garden center? And there are actually not that many garden centers in city centers, I guess. Obviously not that many people have gardens or if they do, maybe this is a huge sweeping statement, but I don't think that many city dwellers really, um, maybe it's not true anymore, but I don't think city dwellers really care for their gardens as much as countryside dwellers. That is a huge sweeping statement and possibly not true. Um, but anyway, so Freddie, the founder of Patch, really recognizes this as a problem. If you have a corner in your house or a patio space where you want to plant, it was basically really, really hard to get them in cities. And I know that to be true because China experienced it. So he decided to fill this problem by um, working with suppliers in Holland and bringing plants over for mail order essentially and I think now they deliver something like 2,000 plants a day in London alone I think it might be a London centric company at the moment I believe you can now get patched in fact I know you can because we've had them delivered out to Cotswolds here um, when garden centers were shut during lockdown that was great for us but yeah another really really interesting story and when I was listening to it I was like Charlie <laughs> why did you not start this business like we literally had this conversation six years ago and Patch is only four years old as a company. Um, yeah, why did Charlie not start that? Or why did I not start that? But it's always the way, isn't it? I, find, I think that with Beauty Pie, I'm like, this is absolutely genius. Um, but yeah, it's a really interesting podcast and I was gonna listen to it on the journey, but I'm nearly there now. Anyway, I'll catch up with you later. Okay, I've just arrived to get my nails done. As usual, I'm a couple of minutes early. I'm just listening to Claudia's second podcast with Vivian and Howard of Little Moon. And I think I was right, by the way. They said that they pioneered putting the Italian gelato and ice cream within the mochi. But also, they're now talking about what happened to the business after TikTok. I never, I wasn't really on, well, I was, I had it, but I wasn't on and like actively using TikTok when this happened. So I didn't see it, um, but apparently there was like a wave of people talking about Little Moons on TikTok and they just said that it increased their business by 2000%, which is just absolutely insane. Mind blowing. Oh my goodness. Um, but anyway, on that note, <laughs> I'm going to go and get my nails done. I think I'm going to get a couple of little flowers for spring and I will show you them in a second. Okay, nails are done. It is getting dark, my goodness. Although it is, my gosh, that is quite sunset over there. Um, it is nearly 6 p.m., so I'm not surprised. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it's very similar to the base color that I had before. Ooh. Um, but we have got little flowers on the pointy finger and the ring finger which looks really sweet, but very subtle as well because I didn't want to do anything too crazy. Whenever I go to see Hayley, we always end up talking about food <laughs> when it's an afternoon appointment. And we've just been talking about the M&S mac and cheese balls. And oh, I kind of think I'm going to have to go and get them. How out of the way is mac and cheese, um, M&S to where I need to go home? Oh, it's completely the wrong way. No, I'm gonna resist mac and cheese balls today, but I am gonna get them next time I go to m &S. The real, real world success because a lot of people aren't on TikTok. 
and so they would never have heard excuse that the before. podcast in the background little moon founder howard talking about tiktok but look at the moon perfect full moon and funnily enough lala was sending me pictures of the full moon and the winds and the waves that it's causing in the maldives but wow that is quite spectacular You'll have to excuse if you can hear me hiccuping in the background of this video clip. I've had hiccups three or four times today, but to end the vlog, I'm going to give you one more kitchen, gar <laughs> kitchen garden update. And very excitingly, we have got... Charlie's got a proper picture. Oh, you're going to actually show me in real life. We have got so basically, the walls starting to come in. So basically, this will all get brushed. Yeah. So yeah. if you look, for example, if you look up here... Yeah. I don't know if you can see from here, but it's been brushed in. Uh -huh. But we haven't yet. What they want to do is let that dry. Yeah. Brush it in, and then if for whatever reason we're not happy with the colour, they it's, they can change it. Okay. Sounds Ooh. mad, but they can pick it out and Dickens. But it's quite hard to get the colour right without seeing it dried. Yeah. It should dry a little bit lighter. Okay. I'd like yeah, it, looks it to a dry bit... a bit later. It's probably a slightly bit dark. Yeah, it's... it looks a bit grey at the moment, doesn't it? It's difficult. We'll have to see what happens. You don't want it too light. Mm -hmm. If you look up here, look, most of it is that slightly darker. Yeah, um, it looks good. And also, very excitingly, so these are the bags of bags of Cotswold stone. They're going to be built in. Oh no, Haunton stone. Um, very excitingly, we have had the sleepers delivered for the kitchen garden raised beds and also the oak posts that'll go on the edge. And these will weather up really nicely. Dickens! Where is he? Oh my oh. god. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> You're absolutely... Oh. No, 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 stop there. Stop there. <laughs> as you can That's see... Miraculously not muddy. As no, you can no, see, the actual... Muddy. Well, my paws are a little bit muddy, <laughs> Daddy. <laughs> the kitchen garden is currently a mud bath, so this is going to be quite the transformation get you up here please. my goodness yeah well obviously the trough's in its place now yeah so um we've got to decide probably in the next couple of days what we do with the post behind so I the think... trough's not central no no it's central to the pot <gasps> oh right so, the, so what you're looking at is not central to the tree mm -hmm. but the whole thing is this tree we've discussed haven't we in the next five ten years we might the tree might not be there so we can't design the whole kitchen garden over a tree. Mm. So if you come here, the trough is central to the path. Right. And that is central to this. <gasps> so everything comes off this pathway. I see. Oh yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, so, Ooh. yeah, it's obviously that hose pipe will be gone. Mm -hmm. You know, if you imagine those three trees behind that walnut tree in five, ten years will be a hell of a lot bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, the Portuguese laurel will be bigger, but they won't go crazy big. But we've got to decide what we're going to do, haven't we? With the, but these are exciting. You see, these are the posts. Mm -hmm. So basically, one of these goes in the ground, like that, up to about there. Right. They're putting all sorts of damp coursing below it to stop any rotting. Okay. I mean, rotting will happen. This, in 30, 40 years, will slowly start to rot. You know, oak in the ground is always... So basically, like that much. <clears throat> and then another one goes on top. And then the post in the corner, I think. Okay. But the posts aren't going to be high, are they? No. no. But you'll, you'll see, they're going to, at some point next week, when they do get down here, they're going to line up what the plan is, and then obviously we'll approve it yeah. before they start, make a start on it. He's doing a number two. Oh, Dickens. The... Right, let's get these creat creatures inside. Ah, so that is the progress. Very exciting. But hopefully before too long, this area is going to start <laughs> taking shape. Come on, you two. Come on, back, back inside. And after listening to all of those podcasts about little moons today, I'm going to end my day with two pistachio little it's moons. Moon. It is a full moon. That's the theme of the day. Yeah, moons. Leave the word moon in your comment if you got to the end of the vlog. Um, but I prefer the pistachio flavor. So they are this kind of like rice jelly around the outside which is the mochi and then this has got a gorgeous creamy pistachio inside what other flavor? Do they do like a oh my gosh um i don't I think they do raspberry, raspberry. Oh. apparently the most popular is they've got a vegan mango. like mango um which we have got in the freezer sorry vegan oh vegan ice cream uh -huh. and a vegan mango it's like okay the mango's fallen from it <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and then they've got salted caramel, um, coconut, um, chocolate hazelnut is their new flavour. So many. Nice. Yeah. Mango. Did you ever have when you went for an Indian at uh, an English Indian curry house, just to be clear, <laughs> which are normally more Bangladeshi, I think, mm. where you'd get dessert and it was like a lemon sorbet in, in a half lemon, a lemon. Or a, and there you, we, our yeah. guys started doing a mango one in a Ooh, mango. Ooh, that's quite a lot of ice cream. Mangoes yeah, are quite big. Yeah, not actually, well, yeah, it depends mm. on the sort of mango, mate, but yeah, yeah. refreshing. But we get our mochi little moons from Ocado. I'll leave them linked down below just in case you want to try them. Um, and that's all for today's vlog, darling. So I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye. Say goodbye. Oh, little. Oh. I've just had my dinner. Yes, I'm licking my lips. My dinner tonight was beef and blueberries. Oh, and organic and really lovely. Oh, I'm such a lucky little boy. Mm hmm.